Hi everyone, uh, Rachel here from Book Piles. Welcome to my uh, video on my reading uh, wrap up for the historical romance readathon, uh, which took place 28th of June through to the 4th of July. Uh, and it was my goal to complete uh, a full house, the whole 16 squares. Um, and in order to do that, I set things up at home to make sure that I had plenty of time to read that week. Um, I'm the caregiver of the house. I care for my mother who has dementia. Uh, and um, I, my father is also here, but he's not a lot of help. <laughs> so uh, I got everything out of the way so that I could concentrate on this readathon read and cross all the squares off. Uh, and I managed to do that. Let me show you my squares are all filled in or crossed over. Um, several books actually, uh, I read five books and a few of them could have covered, um, you know, the same square several times. So uh, I'm quite pleased. I did take a little bit of a pinch of salt for one of them, uh, but I'm going with it. <laughs> so um, I will now tell you the five books that I read and my thoughts of them. I have been keeping notes uh, and I will probably uh, pause after each uh, book and just read through my notes again so that I can try and get it right in my head to explain it to you. Um, so the first book I read was the group read which was on my Kindle uh, and it is Olivia and the Mask Duke by Grace Calloway. <sighs> now, uh, uh, the positive thing about this book is that it crossed off seven squares in one hit, which was good. Um, otherwise, what did I think of this book? I um, it, It's a spying book. They are both undercover spies, Libby and Ben. They have a past history in that she is a lot, a lot younger than him, and he saved her as a child from drowning. Uh, and she's a little bit love struck and has always fancied him and he's like, yeah, no, 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 you're just, you're the family friend. Um, so she's trying her best to make him see that she could be a love interest. Uh, going along with this is the story of a dangerous drug doing the rounds in London and killing people. Uh, and Ben is working undercover, hence the mask Duke. Um, I didn't actually write down what Duke he is, the Duke of who, but anyway. Um, so he is trying to solve who is supplying this dangerous drug that is killing people. Uh, and Livy is uh, invited into a charity organisation, which is actually an undercover spying ring as well. So she's trying to do a little bit of undercover work. Uh, so the, you've got these two little paths twining through. I note in my notes that it took almost 40% of the book before the book became interesting. There was a lot of backstory between uh, Livy and Ben and I, it got a bit monotonous really. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I've missed the point of this book at all. I don't know if this is just how the author writes. I've never read a Grace Calloway before. I found all the backstory and jumping back to the backstory uh, between the main spy plotline um, annoying, basically. Um, what happens? They am I getting my people mixed up? Yes, I am. So I'm not going there. Uh, it works out that they figure out who. Uh, between them they figure out who is supplying the drugs and they work to unmask that person um, I just yeah it, it it was a read I read it I read it in a day so it can't have been that bad but it was also I knew I needed to read it in a day because of the readathon I just have had a problem with all the backstory there was there was a, what I wrote down here actually, I was looking at it, um, it mentions the banter between Livy and Ben, but I don't think the banter was actually in the book, so I can't remember why they were talking about that. Um, 
but we never really got that banter. I, I would have liked more of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in time, more back in time is what I've written down. I'm undecided whether I would read the second book. Um, now I know who the characters are in it, obviously. Um, I just, yeah, it didn't, it hasn't left me with wanting more. So that was the first book I read. The second book I read was also on my Kindle, and that is The Ray Kess by Scarlett Peckham. I had high hopes for this book as well. This gave me two uh, squares. I think every other book gave me... Oh no, they didn't. They gave me a variety of different things. Okay, this one gave me two squares. Um, as I said, I had high hopes for this because in historical romances, the there is always a rake. The guy that, you know, sleeps around and everyone is swooning over him and he's the good-looking rich duke and, and he just has his evil way. Um, or not, as the case may be. Um, so it's there's never really an equivalent female she's always some compromised or um widow or or just something like that who doesn't care but the term ray kess caught my eye because it implied that this was someone having a bit of fun um but the book really didn't concentrate on that at all it um it followed the story. Uh, I was going to stop and read, wasn't I? And I haven't done that. So we will just um, have to do a little bit of poking around. Who is she? Did I write her name down? I know his name is Adam. What is her name? I didn't even need to write a whole page on this. Oh boy, I didn't even write her name down. Okay, so the Ray Kess, we will have to call her. She has gone to stay in the family cottage in Devon to try and deal with some demons. She is a drunk, basically. Um, she's drinking every day. She spies. Um, it, it starts with her walking up to a man on a outlook over the ocean on the south coast i think they're in cornwall uh, and she thinks that this is her lover who's come to see her uh, but in fact it is the architect that her neighbor has hired and so there's a little bit of a shock thing um between them and then it moves on to just various interactions between the two of them. He is a really nice guy. He is a widow. He has two young children and his sister who cares for his children while he's working. And she's a drunk, basically. <laughs> so it's less her jumping into bed with lots of blokes and more about this little love story between Adam, who is the architect, and the unnamed Rakes. What is her name? Goodness me. I I enjoyed the story, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I was wanting um, a bit more of her being a rakeess rather than the after effects of her being a rakeess. It talks about how she got to that point, what happened to her in her life, um, and her demons in coming back to... Um, this home cottage and that sort of thing. Um, his interaction with her was very nice. You know, he, he looked after her. He mended things in the cottage. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's... Um, <laughs> I read it. <laughs> Hopeless. I was going to do really good on my reviews and I haven't. Um, uh, yeah, she pushes him away a lot. Yes. It wasn't as what I was hoping it would be in the end, but it crossed two squares off. Uh, Alright, let's move on. I think we can do this one a bit better. This is book three that I read. Um, Julia Quinn's The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband. 
uh, and I took four squares with this and this is a bit of dramatic license because I did put this down as marriage of convenience um, the grain of salt is that he didn't know it was a marriage of convenience because he was out cold she just said she was married to him and it helped her in her quest so some purists might argue with that but there is no readers on police um, okay, so The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband, this is book two in The Ropes Breeze, uh, and this is Edward, yes, and uh, Cecilia. Uh, Cecilia's brother is good mates with Edward, and they are off in the colonies in America, and um, she gets word that he, her brother has gone oh excuse me that's not good I apologize um, she gets word that her brother has been injured as in hospital I think that's right and because she is on her own back in home her father has died uh, a cousin who is a sounds like he's a bit of a grotty bloke turns up sort of slimying up to her and suggesting he'll marry her and she's like Ugh, no thanks um, so she gets on a ship and goes to America. She goes to the hospital where she thinks her brother is uh, and finds out that he's not there, but um, Edward is. And she knows who he is from the letters because uh, Thomas and she had been writing to each other. So the hospital won't let her in to see Edward, so she says she's his wife. And suddenly everyone sort of stands to attention and lets her in and does all this stuff for her. And she cares for Edward for a few days before he wakes up. Um, and everyone just thinks she's his wife. By saying that she is his wife, it gets her um, more help to find her brother. If she was just a, a woman on her own, they were just basically ignoring her. So by saying she was married to him, she got a bit more help and assistance um, so the story basically is how they cope um, once he wakes up and of course he wakes up initially and he can't remember anything so he knows who she is by her name um, because he remembers he has a friend called Thomas who has a sister called Cecilia uh, so he thinks well maybe I did marry her so they go through period of time I'm not sure how long um, where he thinks he has married her and she's letting him think that uh, all the while this is all still in, in America um, and then he eventually remembers um, and one of the things he had said to her is to don't don't I don't care what goes on or whatever don't lie to me I don't like liars so obviously it's a huge lie she's lying to him um, so there's a bit of angst when that all comes to a head uh, and but it's like I, I've, I have enjoyed I mean this at that point was the second book that I had read I really do like the series I like the way that the, the brothers are portrayed um, as quite nice gentlemen, quite witty and funny. There's a lot of funny little scenes and witty little remarks between the pair of them um, as they learn to like each other. Um, she, <laughs> it turns out that his godmother is the wife of the governor of New York and they are invited to a ball and she's like, I've got nothing to wear, I can't go. And he's like, I'll get you a dress. Um, so he, he actually gets her a dress, so she's like, now nah, how do I get out of it? She's allergic to strawberries, so she goes and buys a strawberry and eats it so she can be unwell <laughs> and not have to attend this ball. Um, I just, I really liked this book. I, I like, as I say, I like the series. Uh, they, you know, obviously they get together, they get married, they go back to America, to England, where his family have been missing him because... They had been told he had gone missing. Um, so it's a really nice little love story with a nice sort of undercurrent of he doesn't remember that he's married her and, you know, all how that all works out. So um, I recommend, I recommend the series. 
Okay, then I read um, Again the Magic by Lisa Klapis. And I think this was my first ever Lisa Klapis. And this is, I discovered, is billed as 0 0.5 of the Wallflower series. Is that right? Is that what I've written down? Uh, which way round did I read it? Uh, yes, of the Wallflowers. And so this um, this actually turned out to have two love stories going through it. There's only one mentioned on the back, um, but there are actually two. And this centres around Aileen and John McKenna. And she is the lady, uh, or one of the daughters of an earl? Possibly. I haven't written, I'm not sure. Uh, and he is the stable hand. Uh, and she, they're in love with each other. But her father finds out, um, and basically he says to her, if you don't send him away, uh, I will. And if he comes back, I will kill him. So she has to be really nasty and send him away. And this is when they're about 18 or 19, quite young. Um, so it then cuts to... Hold that thought. Prior to... Once he has left, uh, there is an incident that happens that causes her some harm. Which, that's all I'll say. Um, then it cuts to... 10 or 12 years later or something like that and he's come back with his business partner um, they basically lost touch with him I think he was keeping in touch with the housekeeper who had basically raised him he had come to the estate as an eight-year-old um, and the housekeeper had basically been his mother and she um, I thought she had lost touch with him but I'm just remembering something I think there was a, a yeah, anyway, <laughs> there was a reason to that. Um, so cut to 12 years later and he comes back with his business partner and he now lives in America and he's made a shed load of money. He's wealthy, um, but he is not obviously titled. He's not from landed gentry or anything like that. Um, and he, his business partner wants to do business with Aileen's brother, who is now the Earl. Um, so the, he invites these Americans and their entourage and friends to stay for a week on the estate. Uh, and Liv, uh, Aileen, rather, has no idea that John McKenna is one of these guys until she lays eyes on him. So then it's all the angst of this um, getting back together. And he's come back for revenge. And it's, he says it in the book, I'm, I'm going to um, get back at her. Um, I actually cried in one of these scenes uh, when he goes and surprises the housekeeper um, literally on his first hours back on the estate he seeks out the housekeeper and that scene was just lovely um, so basically we spend the book with Aileen and McKenna trying to uh, either avoid them each other uh, ignore the fact that they're still attracted to each other and ultimately then they're coming together. Running along beside that is the other love story which is um, Aileen's sister and I can't think of her name off the top of my head either. I don't think I can get it quickly. Uh, 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 uh. I wanted to say it was something like Liv too, but I don't think it is. Oh, come on. When you want to find something, L Livia. Yeah, I thought that was right, Livia. Um, so she has been basically secluding herself for the last couple of years. She was engaged to someone who was killed, uh, and afterwards uh, it was discovered she was pregnant. Um, and she had a miscarriage, I believe, uh, lost the baby, I think that's 
correct so basically because of all the societal norms around that she basically put herself into hiding she doesn't go to any parties any functions anything like that so through when the americans come to stay she doesn't engage with them um, but she is outside at night listening to the music and um, she is stumbled upon by Gideon who is John McKenna's business partner uh, and he catches sight of her at night and interacts with her but he doesn't know who she is and then eventually he does know who she is. Um, he is a drunk so she's like I like you but I don't like you enough to give up my life for a drunk. Um, and he has to make some decisions. So there's that story and there's Aileen and McKenna um, and It's I enjoyed it. I really quite liked it I I wanted to know more and I'm I understand that in book two of the wallflowers we hear more about them um, I haven't got that far yet um, It it, 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 it uh, Yeah <laughs> I just think uh, uh, that, yes, I enjoyed it. I think that I enjoyed it. I don't think. Is there anything that I can quickly glean off my page? Um, no. It's a nice, they're two nice little love stories with some issues to deal with. Uh, the injury that she ha suffered um, clouds her view of being attractive to, to men so she, one of the reasons she wants to pull back from um, McKenna and just send him away again on after he stayed for the week is because of her thoughts of herself because of this injury and the way he deals with that is very sweet too um, so they all live happily ever after is what happens in these books <laughs> um, all right let's try and get this last book um, summarized and I can't even remember this last book now who are the people in the last book oh yes okay who what's him who's he what's his name have you have I really not written down his name Oh, crikey. Nope, that's another book. I have to learn how to do book reviews or I'll write them down a lot better than I'm doing now. There we go, there's his name. Okay, right. So the last book I read was also an e-book uh, and it was another Lisa Kleypas, uh, Secrets of a Summer Night, which is book one of The Wallflowers. Um, so what features from, again, the magic and in Secrets of a Summer Night is the location. So the home of Aileen and Livia is uh, used in this book um, for a, a weekend uh, or a country getaway, however long they went for. So The Secrets of a Wallflower is the first of a wallflower series of, I think it's five books. Um, and there are four girls, Annabelle, Evie, uh, and two, two US sisters, Lillian and Daisy. Uh, and they all have various reasons for being a wallflower um, and, and therefore, you know, sit on the sidelines and don't really get the attention that they want. Um, or need. So in the first book it's Annabelle's story and she basically has no dowry. I believe she's written as an attractive spinster uh, but because she's got no dowry no one will look at her except for Simon Hunt who is um, okay so he, he comes from a common background and he has made his fortune and that's why he gets invited. My legs are going to sleep. He gets invited to all the parties because of his wealth, basically. Um, 
and he has always had an interest in her and she has always been like no thank you um and so they butt heads basically but um so I think this is, if I remember rightly, is a, a enemies to lovers or hate to love sort of story. Uh, the girls all decide that they're going to help each other find husbands. They've got like the rest of the season to try and get some inroads. Um, Annabelle needs the money. Evie, I think, I can't remember what her issue is off the top of my head. And the American sisters... Uh, want an, an English titled husband basically um, so they all end up conspiring to get or, or one of them manages to get them all invited to this country uh, estate weekend thing that's taking place at the same estate as Aileen and Livia come from um, and obviously Simon Hunt is there as well so it's the thawing between the two of them. Um, and what else have we got? Oh yes, okay. So running along beside him wanting her, there is a rumour that she is a loose woman uh, because there is a carriage always seen at her house. Uh, it turns out that that carriage is going to see her mother um, but the guy is a pretty lecherous guy the guy in the carriage and he ends up at this country estate so um, Annabelle has gone with her mother hoping she'd get a break from that situation uh, and it turns out that he is there so um, there's the angst around that she doesn't like this guy um, most of the people think that she's the one being a bit free with her favours uh, but not and Simon Hunt is like well if she's giving it to him she can give it to me uh, so <laughs> there's a whole lot of confusion around all of that um, she gets really sick and I think it's that kind of turning point where they start to thaw towards each other um, he really looks after her and then when she's a little bit better and she can sit up they play a game of chess together um, and that's I think the turning point in the story for the pair of them um, what have we got here I've said I've liked the way he pursued her the banter between them and the thaw of her towards him <laughs> that's how I ended it um, I think this this actually was, I enjoyed this. Um, uh, more spark lights between them. Okay, so as they interact more, the, the more there are sparks between them, basically. So, um, I, yeah, I enjoyed it and I'm definitely interested in, the, in reading more. And certainly I will read book two because it brings back the two couples from this story. Um, and it's the girl's uh, brother Marcus and Lillian, the American heiress in book one. I think they are the two people in book two. Um, so that garbled mess was my wrap up of the historical romance readathon. Um, of the five, there were definitely three I enjoyed and two which were a bit more like this um, and probably not going to be followed up like it, it, I know there is a, a second book for the Olivia and the Master Duke but I, I don't know I've got enough other historical romances to read um, I want to get the Rokesbury's finished uh, and I want the second Wallflower book at this point excuse me talking too much so we will just see um, anyway I did well I got a full house yay me <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it and I will certainly be doing another historical romance readathon whenever one crops up. Okay, I will edit this, uh, get the pictures slotted in somehow, uh, and I will catch you again in another video. Thanks everyone, bye for now.